As the largest producers of foundry pig iron in Britain, the Stanton Iron Works Company Limited operate 12 blast furnaces situated in the Midlands, in Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire and Northamptonshire. They are a familiar and impressive sight to travellers by road and rail through this otherwise mainly rural area. The function of these blast furnaces is to extract iron from iron ore, in which it occurs not as pure metal, but as an oxide mixed with earthy impurities. The continuous supply of raw materials, and indeed vast quantities are needed to maintain the large output, plays a vital part in this story of production. The Stanton furnaces operate mainly on English iron ore, all of which is quarried in the Midlands. This quarry is being worked by the open cast method, where, after the overburden has been removed, the ore, or iron stone as it's called, is extracted by mechanical means. Subsequently, the land is carefully restored. A proportion of the iron ore undergoes a preliminary calcining treatment before it is used for pig iron manufacture. This can be carried out either at the quarry, as in this case, or at the various blast furnace plants. In the calcining process, the ore is heated to drive off carbon dioxide, to remove excessive moisture, and to break up the larger lumps. When this is carried out at the plant, alternate layers of ore and coal slack are loaded into kilns, and a slow burning process takes place. This process takes about a week to complete and the ore is then ready for smelting. The treated ore is drawn off from the bottom of the kilns into hopper wagons, from where it's emptied into bunkers until required for furnace charging. The next raw material which plays an important part in the manufacture of pig iron is limestone. The function of limestone in the furnace is to act as a flux, enabling the earthy impurities and slag-forming materials present in the ore and coke to separate from the molten iron and form a fluid slag that will flow from the furnace. The limestone also removes a proportion of the sulphur from the iron and generally acts as a purifying agent. The last but equally important raw material used in the making of pig iron is coke, which provides the carbon necessary for carrying out the smelting process. The major proportion used is supplied by Stanton's own coke oven plant. Here, various types of coal are blended under stringent control to produce coke of the correct quality required by the blast furnaces. The chemical composition and the physical characteristics of the coke are equally important. During the coking process, many valuable byproducts are released, such as tar, benzoyl, sulfate of ammonia, and coke oven gas of a high calorific value. After processing, these products are used for a wide variety of purposes. Previously, the coke oven battery consumed almost half its own gas output for heating the ovens. But by utilizing blast furnace gas for this purpose, additional supplies of coal gas are available for domestic and industrial use. Up to 23 million cubic feet a day are now boosted into the East Midlands gas mains. This is a valuable contribution to the nation's resources of fuel and power. From the raw materials assembled in the bunkers, the burden or charge for the furnace is made up. The requisite weights of iron ore, limestone and coke are calculated for each particular grade of iron. And as the various ores used differ in composition, this part of the process must be carefully controlled. The correct proportions are weighed in scale cars and loaded into the charging skips. These, when filled, are hoisted to the furnace top. The movement of the skip, together with the actual operation of furnace charging, is remotely controlled in sequence at ground level. When the skip reaches the top of the skipway, it is tipped through the charging gear of the furnace, during which operation the hopper turns to give an even spread to the materials before entering the furnace. Inside the furnace top, below the revolving hopper, is an arrangement of conical-shaped bells. During charging, these act as one-way valves, preventing the escape of the valuable gases produced in the blast furnace. This diagram shows what happens inside during charging. 
the raw materials are tipped into the revolving hopper. The small bell is lowered and the materials discharge onto the larger bell. After three charges have passed to the large bell, the small bell is shut. The large bell lowered and the materials enter the furnace. To complete the cycle, the large bell is returned to its closed position. Loading or charging is almost continuous and the time taken from when the raw materials enter the furnace to iron being ready for tapping is approximately nine hours. During this time, inside the blast furnace, complex chemical reactions are constantly taking place between the coke, the iron ore and air. An air blast produced by turbo blowers and heated by these Cowper stoves is introduced into the lower part of the furnace, causing the coke to burn fiercely. The principle is rather similar, but on a vast scale, to the action of ordinary bellows on a domestic fire. The hot air blast enters the furnace through the bustle, the large tube which can be seen encircling the base. The furnace is therefore hottest at the bottom and relatively cooler towards the top. The inside of the furnace can be roughly divided into four zones. At the top, which we can call zone one, is where the charge enters. Here, where the heat is the lowest, somewhere in the region of 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the ore is dried out and losing its moisture becomes porous. In zone two, iron begins to separate from the ore, which by now is a spongy mass. This is where the iron begins to melt out. The process continues in zone three. And finally, the molten iron trickles through the coke into the hearth, zone four. The molten iron and slag, slag being the residue of the earthy components of the raw materials, separate from each other. The iron being the heavier, sinking to the bottom, the slag floating to the top. This huge mechanism produces not only iron and slag in large quantities, but an equally valuable product, blast furnace gas. The chemical reactions inside the furnace change the hot air blast into a stream of combustible gas containing a large proportion of carbon monoxide, a valuable fuel of which good use is made on the plant itself. From the offtakes, the four vertical tubes mounted at the furnace top, the gas passes to the cleaning units where it is washed and cooled by water sprays. Finally, dust is removed by electrostatic precipitators. As previously stated, blast furnace gas is used for underfiring the coke ovens, but it is also an important factor for raising steam, which drives the turboelectric generators and the turbo blowers, which produce the air blast. And for heating the Cowper stoves, where the temperature of the air blast, before it enters the furnace, is raised to 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. At regular intervals throughout the day and night, slag is tapped and run into ladles. Slag is another important product used for many purposes. After it has been allowed to solidify, it is processed in a crushing plant and reduced to a wide range of sizes. Dry slag is used for road making both as foundation material and as the wearing course. It is used also as a filter bed media for railway ballast, strengthening river banks, and as aggregate in certain types of concrete work. Coated with tar or bitumen, it is extensively used as tar macadam and bituminous macadam. And the finer grades are used in the form of cold asphalt. Hot asphalt is also made from slag aggregate and now to the highlight of the furnaceman's job, the tapping of the iron. This operation is commenced by a compressed air drilling machine, which penetrates about two feet into the fire clay plug in the bottom of the furnace, and completed by driving in a tapping bar, or alternatively, by burning a hole through with an oxygen lance. At a temperature of approximately 2,750 degrees Fahrenheit, the molten metal flows from the furnace into hot metal cars.
These ladles are lined with fire brick and are capable of holding 30 tons of molten metal. At the completion of a cast, the tapping hole is resealed with a remote controlled gun, which forces a plug of fire clay into the tap hole against the flow of iron. The molten metal is conveyed to the pig casting machine, where by a continuous process, pigs of a uniform size are produced. The use of large ladles ensures an iron of constant composition. In this machine, the iron flows at a carefully controlled and even rate into metal moulds, which are carried along on an endless chain. As the moulds travel along, they pass through water sprays which cool the iron. And at the end of the belt, the pigs are discharged into a pit. This modern method of machine casting produces uniform pigs of a standard weight, which are convenient in shape for easy handling. Being free from sand and other impurities, the use of machine cast pig iron assists considerably in cupola control. Four standard brands, Stanton, Holwell, Rixons and Manton are manufactured. The laboratories play an important part at every stage of the manufacturing process, maintaining technical control and assuring a high consistency of quality. Their work rarely starts with the raw materials. Samples of every batch of coke, iron ore, and limestone are analyzed. And advance information on their composition is supplied to the blast furnace department. From this information, the blast furnace burdens and operating data are calculated to produce the required grade of iron. But this is just one side of the activities of the laboratories. They are equally concerned with the finished product, from every batch of iron and slag, samples are taken at the furnace and subjected to the most stringent analysis and tests. And here again, the results provide a close and final check on the manufacturing process. It is this scientific knowledge and scrupulous care given at every stage that ensures and maintains the high standard of consistency and quality for which Stanton Pig Iron is world famed. The Stanton Company supply pig iron in a wide range of grades to the requirements of industry. For high duty service, calling for high strength, close grain grey iron castings, refined pig iron, known as Stanton Dale, is produced and is available in seven standard grades. Carefully selected raw materials are melted in cupolas under closely controlled conditions. And as the molten metal runs into a receiver, the various alloys are added and then a desulfurizing treatment is given. By this method, a consistent product is obtained with a guaranteed analysis within close limits. Stanton Dale refined iron meets the demand for a blended iron for direct use in the foundry, thus avoiding the difficulties encountered when steel scrap is used as part of the cupola charge. It has a low carbon content with the graphitic carbon in a fine curly flake formation evenly distributed. This close structure enables the iron to meet the higher tensile requirements of British Standard 1452 of 1948. Before leaving the laboratories, there is an important aspect of their work which should be mentioned, and that is their service to the customer. The Stanton Company offered to all those engaged in the iron foundry trades, the free advisory services of specialists in metallurgical practice and technique. This service takes the form of analyses and tests carried out by the research department on castings or test bars submitted to them by customers. And if necessary, constructive suggestions are offered if the desired results are not being obtained. Where there are difficulties in works practice which can best be investigated on the spot, the service provides for a personal visit from a Stanton metallurgist. This mutual policy of collaboration can do much to widen the field for cast iron products and also ensure that wherever there is a call for pig iron, the user can confidently rely on Stanton.